Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Lady Rose of Goddess Garage and today I wanted to talk about our brains and how they serve us in our life. Now a lot of people know like our brains are very important of course, they're needed to continue life in this shell that we are walking through life in. But I wanted to talk about how our brains work to bring in or manifest in things in your life. Because people will throw around that word like, oh, you need to just manifest it in. You just need to bring it in. And then people are like, well, how do I do that? Do I just change my thoughts? Yes is the simple answer. But there is a bit of a process. And to understand how the brain works helps you to be able to manifest these beautiful things that you want to bring in to your life and this happiness that you want to bring into your life, that sort of thing. So I'm going to talk about the science behind our brains. Now, of course, as humans, we don't know all of it. The brain is a very unexplored territory um, as far as things go. We've mastered a lot of things. We've figured out a lot of things, but our brains are still something that very much confuse us. But we do have some information, obviously. So your mind is divided into two, um, not equally. There's the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. So that's what I'm talking about. Now, as far as sort of size of how big one brain is versus the other, they need to be together. They need to work together. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. But as far as size goes, your conscious mind, for instance, is your waking mind. It's the mind that you use when you're awake. It's your logical side, it's your reasoning side, it's your differentiating and discerning side. Um, your, your conscious mind is the thing that controls your movement. Like let's say I want to reach over and pick up my drink. Um, it's my conscious mind that told me to extend your arm, grab the drink and bring it to you kind of thing. If I want to pick up my pen, it's my conscious mind that's telling me what to do. now. Obviously, my brain isn't going, reach out your arm and pick up your pen. But we do that in split seconds. Now, for us, we think our conscious mind is working very fast, but it's actually the slower side of our brain. Our conscious mind is also like when people ask you questions like, what is your name? My name is Lady Rose. You know, so my brain went to the files and looked up the name card and my name is Lady Rose. Or my legal name is Rhonda. <laughs> so you know, my brain can access that information too. Um, it, it also, you know, like if someone asks you a math question like two plus two equals four, that's your conscious mind working. If someone asks you the day of the week, like today is Monday, that's your conscious mind working. So that's what your conscious mind does. It controls the thoughts of logic and reason, and it also controls um, your, your movements that you do all day long. Now, like I said, there are two different brains and your conscious brain is actually the slower one. So when we compare size, the conscious mind is about the size of Mercury, one of the smallest planets in our solar system. And the subconscious mind is like more like the size of Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system. So there's a big difference between the sizes of the two brains. Now it doesn't mean physically necessarily because we're not walking around with one side of our head bigger than the other but that's if you're comparing size that's a good analogy so as far as information goes we have information coming at us all the time our our bodies alone send our brains 11 um, million bits of information per second all day long and as humans we have over 6,000 thoughts in one day so we're doing a lot of thinking and we're processing a lot of information now when that 11 million bits of information is being sent to our brain our conscious mind is not taking it all in and processing it our conscious mind can take in 40 to 50 bits not million 40 to 50 bits of information per second which is lightning speed like i said when i go to reach out to pick up my pen my brain at lightning speed tells me to extend my arm, pick it up, and grab your pen. Now I don't have to go through a step-by-step -step process because it's processing that 40 to 50 bits of information because I start with the intention, I wanna pick up the pen, and then my brain goes into the instructions of how to pick up the pen 
and it does it all in split seconds, right? So that's pretty fast, 40 to 50 bits of inf information per second. But really, like I said, our conscious mind is our slower mind, and it is the mind um, where we filter a lot of stuff out. There's a lot of information that comes to us at all times, and we filter a lot of it out. But, but what the conscious mind is doing is it's filtering through compressing that energy, or not energy, bits of information into 40 or 50 bits per second that it can digest. And the extra surplus is sent to our subconscious mind. So our subconscious mind tends to take over when we're sleeping because it's the one that dreams. It's the one that communicates with us through our dreams. Our subconscious mind does, or I mean our conscious mind when we're dreaming and sleeping doesn't really go to sleep because where our brain never really shuts off, but it is in a resting state. So our subconscious mind is more taking over. Now our subconscious mind compared to the 40 to 50 bits of information per second can take in 40 million bits of information per second. And when it processes this information is normally at nighttime when we're dreaming. In fact, that's when it does it. Um, that's why sleep deprivation is such a uh, destructive thing, whether it's, you know, you're, you're being tortured or whether, you know, you've got a new baby or whether you just can't sleep. That's why sleep is so, so very important. It does a lot of things because healing is a nocturnal activity. So if you're sick or anything like that and you're not sleeping, not resting, you have to sleep in order to heal. So that's why doctors are always telling their patients get lots of sleep, you know, because you're getting over this surgery or this illness or whatever it might be. So sleep is very important because we only heal when we're sleeping. I used to uh, be an esthetician uh, back in the day and when a client came in to me who had acne for instance, I would often ask how much do you sleep? Do you sleep on a regular schedule? Do you get eight to nine hours of sleep a day? Um, are you, you know, in a regular routine for sleep? And probably nine times out of 10, I would say most of them said, no, I don't sleep well at all. Um, so that can be a contributing factor because acne is about healing the skin to get rid of it, right? And if you're not sleeping, you're not healing. So the other thing that you do when you're sleeping is your subconscious mind takes over and it processes all that information that the conscious mind has been taking and throwing to the back to the subconscious mind going, you deal with this. <laughs> but our subconscious mind, um, well, let's get back to the conscious mind for a minute. So the conscious mind has no memory. Um, that's the department of our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind holds our memories. So our conscious mind goes through our day, does our things, but it doesn't really have a memory. Um, and it only processes or only can really handle one thought at a time. I remember reading an article quite a few years ago about multitasking and there's been numerous uh, studies done on multitasking and time and again I keep kind of seeing and especially in that particular article there were a lot of studies done and it turns out as humans we're not actually very good at multitasking. So we're better in a lot of these studies if you know, if you do this one thing here until it's done, and then you do this one thing here till it's done, and then you do this one thing here till it's done, as opposed to trying to do all three things at the same time, you'll find that because you focused on one thing at a time, you got them done at a better quality um, because you were focused and your attention was there, it wasn't spread out. You got it done faster than, it, I know with multitasking a lot of times it feels like it's faster because I'm doing all this and blah, 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 and then I'm done and oh look at this, I'm all done. But you actually get it done faster if you focus at one job at a time. Um, I know I'm a little, you know, distracted and like squirrel kind of thing. <laughs> so I know when I'm doing housework, for instance, I, I think I'm doing dishes and I'm thinking, well, this needs to be done. So I'll go and start this. And then I come back to dishes and stuff like that. And I think I'm multitasking, but I'm not really, I'd be better if I just stuck to one job at a time. So like I said, the articles really showed that we're not actually very efficient at multitasking. It's not that we can't do it, we can, but it won't be done as well and it won't be done as fast. So if you wanna do it fast and you wanna do it well, focus on one thing at a time. Um, so the other thing too that uh, the 
conscious mind does is it takes in, like I said, 40 to 50 bits of information. It has 6,000 plus. The average, I think, is about 6,200 thoughts um, for the average human being a day. That's a lot of thoughts. And what the conscious mind does is it sort of filters through them. So it decides whether, it, first of all, whether it's real or imaginary, if it's right or wrong, or positive or negative. It, it doesn't always do all three, but it does one or two of those things. So the big one is, is, is this positive or negative? And it can't be a little of both. Your conscious mind is very logical and it will decide whether it's negative or positive. It will put a positive tag on it or a negative tag on it. So this is where the trick comes in for your conscious subconscious mind. Because your subconscious mind, like I mentioned earlier, is or maybe I didn't, I can't remember now, but <laughs> I'll talk about what it covers. So like I said, um, I did mention earlier, it, it contains your memories. So it has your memories. It's the one that holds all your memories. It's the one that holds your emotions as well and your reactions. So everything you react to is from your subconscious mind, every reaction you kind of have. And your beliefs are stored there. It is also uh, in the domain of the subconscious mind that runs all the automatic things. You know, like I said, your breathing and your digesting and, and all your internal organs, because we don't sit there and go digest, digest, digest after a meal. We're not having to press a button to make sure our, our kidneys are working. Oh, make sure the kidneys are working now. You know, we don't have to do any of that. Our subconscious mind covers all the internal, make sure the blood's going where it needs to go. Um, and that sort of thing. So that's the territory of the subconscious mind so that we don't consciously have to work our bowels or consciously work our digestive system or consciously tell our heart to beat, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Because we'd forget and then we'd die. <laughs> um, so like I said, it's in control of all those things. But the other thing about the subconscious mind is it accepts the orders of the conscious mind every time. And it is not able to, and it obeys the conscious mind all the time. So I'm going to give you an example of how it obeys the conscious mind. So the, the other thing about the subconscious mind is it cannot distinguish between what is imaginary and what is real. And it takes everything from your conscious mind that your conscious mind gives to it as literal. So our conscious mind you know, like I said, it tells us when to pick up the pen. It tells us to, when someone asks me my name, I say Lady Rose. It also believes and makes into a truth everything you say. So, for instance, if I say, oh, God, that was stupid, Rhonda. Why do you always make these stupid mistakes? You're always so dumb. If I say something like that, my conscious mind takes that and makes it, like, obeys that command. And then it starts to create a reality around that. Now I'm gonna explain that in a little bit because this goes back to your conscious mind tags every thought you have either positively or negatively. So this is where we're getting into this, how does this work, okay? So think on that. Every thought you have, and you have about 6,200 thoughts, is tagged positive or negative, and from there, it either makes it real or imaginary, right or wrong, that sort of thing. So your you, the, it accepts what your conscious mind thinks or focuses on in a very literal sense. So what we can do with our conscious mind is we can purposefully and consciously imprint positive images, positive statements, um, positive scenarios, to the subconscious mind. So we must be mindful of what am I saying through the day? How often do you complain about something? How often do you compare yourself to something? How often are you yelling at somebody? How often are you telling yourself that that was stupid or that you are stupid? Stuff can be stupid, but if you start saying you are, I am this and I am that, because remember, in my other video where I talked about the most powerful statements that you can use, I am is one of the most powerful. So I am beautiful. You know, you be mindful of what you're following I am with because a lot of us aren't even conscious of what we're saying and what we follow that I am with. So 
the subconscious cannot reason or analyze, nor can it rationalize. That's all part of your conscious mind. And your conscious mind sends it back to your subconscious. Your subconscious is very childlike. That's why sometimes people um, sometimes refer to the subconscious mind as your inner child kind of thing, because it takes everything literally and it doesn't differentiate from real or imaginary. It thinks it's all real. And if you so if you believe in magic and you really believe in magic, your subconscious mind goes, yeah, there's magic in the world, you know, and you can start bringing in magic. It will seem magical in your life. Um, so, like I said, your your con subconscious will start, like, say I say, oh, Rhonda, that was really stupid of you to do, and you're always so dumb. My subconscious mind will take that statement and start to create more scenarios where... I feel stupid, where I feel like I'm doing something wrong because I did it in a stupid way. And this is your subconscious taking the command from your conscious mind and making it into a reality because then it works with the universe. It sends that energy out there and starts saying, yes, we want more of these stupid scenarios so we can be stupid because we believe we're stupid because <laughs> your subconscious mind is not the one that's going to go, no, Rhonda, you're not stupid. You're very smart. You're an intelligent woman who really has command of her life. That's your conscious mind. <laughs> so when you correct yourself, that's good too, because your subconscious will go, oh, wait, okay. Oh, uh, there's been a change. We're not stupid. We're now very intelligent and confident. Okay. So then they put that order out and it starts to create and attract scenarios where you're finding yourself being really smart and you're very confident and you're in control of your life kind of thing. And what the subconscious mind does is it keeps repeating those scenarios for whatever you say, whether it's good or bad, and reinforcing it to the point where it becomes a truth and a belief. And you really start to truly believe these things about you and I can't tell you the number of people that come in and go, it's like I just have this string of bad luck. Yes, because you've been bringing that in because your subconscious, you say it once and your subconscious will, because it's the bigger brain and it acts faster, will then say, well, we need to repeat this because it feels like it's exercise, right? It's exercise and you need to repeat it in order to let it become true and then it becomes a belief. So this is something you need to be very aware of what your conscious mind is doing, what you are saying, what you are believing, because you're sending it back to your subconscious mind to repeat it and reinforce it. Okay, so then your subconscious mind, although very powerful, cannot differentiate. So it will manifest poor health, lack of funds, hardship, limitations, failures, like I always fail at this, oh, I always fail that, oh, I can't write exams because I always fail exams. When you say things like that, your subconscious mind goes, okay, all right, so we, we don't do well at, at exams, we always fail them. And they will reinforce that belief so that you always fail exams. And it's not that you're not capable of doing it, it's that your subconscious has made it a belief. And beliefs are very hard to break once your subconscious has made them. But you can break them on purpose by putting into your conscious mind, by actively thinking, no, exams are pretty easy. I'm good at them because I've read the books. I know what I'm doing. And even if I haven't read the books, I'm still pretty good at exams. I'm good at it. I don't get nervous. I'm good at exams. I got a good brain on my head or brain in my head, good head on my shoulders, whatever the saying is, and I can write these exams, you know? Or I always get nervous when I go into, into parties, or I always get nervous in big crowds. Your subconscious mind takes that and goes, okay, you're right. Your subconscious mind always says, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so know that about everything you say to friends, family, or strangers. Oh, I always get nervous when I get into big crowds. Subconscious mind goes, yep, yeah, you're right. We're going to create more scenarios where you're in crowds and you're feeling nervous and you're having anxiety attacks. We're going to create that so that it becomes a truth and a belief so that it's cemented in. 
because your subconscious mind goes, yep, you're right, every time. It obeys every command you give it through your conscious mind. So keep that in mind. Um, but it can also bring in, so like I said, it doesn't differentiate. It doesn't matter what it is. It can bring in unhappiness or happiness. It's your choice. It can bring in failure or achievement. It can bring in success or unsuccess. It can bring in money or no money. It can bring in good health or bad health. Whatever you want it to bring in, especially once you become aware of this, now you know everything you say will become a truth because your subconscious will start to repeat that. So it's sort of a careful what you wish for kind of scenario because if you start talking about your bad health and how bad it is and how horrible it is and how much you're suffering, it, it's different from um, discussing it, you know, in a way of sharing with other people and knowing that you two are not alone because there are diseases out there that are incurable. For instance, I have fibromyalgia. It's chemo triggered fibromyalgia. So um, I know that I know right now in the medical community, there is no cure for fibromyalgia. So I know from day to day, it's kind of a, a bit of a, you know, shot in the dark to see what I'm going to feel like. Now, mentally, I've had to kind of grasp this illness. One is I've had to learn that I might need to slow down some days. I need to also be flexible meaning that sometimes I get up and I'm not feeling so great and I can't move and I am in great amounts of pain and I won't be able to do the things that I was planning on doing for that day. And then there's days where I get up and I'm you know, feeling good and I can get through my day. But I ha have had to learn to be flexible. I've had to learn to slow down and be patient with myself and be patient with the world around me. And, um, I had to get rid of my victim mentality around this as well. Um, and so that's the thing, that it's a, all a mental game. So like I said, I know there's diseases that are out there that, you know, there is no cure for. You're just, you're going to have to deal with it and you're going to have to get through it and do your best kind of thing. But there's always sort of a roundabout way of dealing with it. And there's often lessons within illnesses. Um, so can you make your mind get fibromyalgia away or some of these other more serious diseases? There's a lot of power in the mind. There's a lot of miracles that happen through mind power. I'm not saying that it's possible, um, but I'm not saying it's impossible either. So, and, and, you know, it's, it's not, you know, you have a strong mind or weak mind if you can't, get rid of your illness you know that that's that's not part of it um so that's a different kind of uh line of thinking but what i wanted to get at is the subconscious mind is a very powerful mind and it can bring in and repel um lots of different things in your life so a lot of people when they think of manifesting they think of bringing in and often yes you're bringing in good or bad or whatever right or wrong but you can also repel things um you know, you can uh, break away from a toxic relationship. Maybe your friend is, you know, just a complete downer and it, every time you go there, it drains your energy and they're a bit of an energy vampire as well and it's just not doing good for you and you would be better off without this particular friendship in your life. So you're not attracting anything into your life necessarily. You're sending that away. And if you need a new friend to take that place, then maybe after that you'll attract a new friend or whatever. But manifesting can also be about taking things out of your life that aren't serving you and releasing them and allowing them to be let go of. So I wanted to talk about too, about how to activate your subconscious mind. Because like I said, you can imprint on your subconscious mind to bring in things, to take things out, whatever you want it to be through your conscious mind, through your actions, through your thoughts, and through your 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 speech, what you say. Both outside yourself, like I said, if, are you talk, complaining about the weather all the time? Because you're creating a negative impression when you talk about the weather. Um, it's not like if you talk about the weather and you hate the snow, that snow comes. <laughs> um, I personally love winter, but 
a lot of people, when they complain about the weather, they're attaching a negative tag to that thought, which is then presented to the subconscious and filtered by it. And when you have so many negative thoughts all the time, your subconscious starts to believe that you want negative things in your life and will start to attract those negative things. So it's not always like, oh, I think my way to happiness. It's what are you saying that's negative? Because your brain, your conscious brain throughout your day with all your 6,200 thoughts attaches a negative or positive tag to it. So be mindful of are you attaching more positive tags to your thoughts? Or are you attaching more negative tags to your thoughts? So, like I said, we're imprinting on our subconscious all day long with what we're saying, what we're doing, and what we're thinking. Mostly what we're thinking and saying. So how do you activate your subconscious mind so that you can have more of a direct link to it? Because your subconscious mind communicates with you. It communicates with you through dreams. It's in charge when we're sleeping and it, it's processing all that information when we dream. And as you know, we dream images, right? We, we're not dreaming, like it's not like someone's sitting there reading us a bedtime story. Our subconscious sends sometimes very weird images to us, um, sometimes very bizarre situations, but nevertheless, it is always sending us images because images is how it communicates. That's why it's so important to watch what images you're imprinting on your conscious mind that then goes to your subconscious mind. Advertisers know this and they play on that because they play on our fears and they play on the impression that images um, evoke on our minds. Like it's the reason why we believe we're gonna be happier 50 pounds thinner. We believe we're gonna be more powerful because we drive this particular car. We believe we're gonna be younger because we have whiter teeth. Um, perhaps we believe we're going to be more powerful because we have this particular label on our clothes. L advertisers know that this plays on our fear to be powerful, to be happier, to find that joy in life. It's all, and find that love in life. You know, they say sex sells, actually love sells better because we're all looking for that someone to love, to accept us for who we are and our whiter teeth and our labels that we're wearing in the car we're driving. <laughs> so, you know, they know that this imprints on our subconscious so that we want those things because we believe they will make us happier and better and more powerful in some way. But if we're in charge and we can start to connect to our subconscious mind more um, consciously, <laughs> there are certain things that we can do to help create that connection. So number one is meditation. Meditation is very important and Meditation and prayer, I kind of put on the same realm because you're hitting the same brain waves. And I'm talking, I'm going to talk a little bit about brain waves. But first, I want to talk a little bit about meditation. So there's transcendental meditation, there's mindfulness meditation, and there's guided meditation. Now, there's other meditations as well, but those are the three sort of big ones that a lot of people kind of know about. So mindful med meditation is. Um, all about, uh, um, well, it's all about kind of coming back to center, letting your thoughts go. Um, it's not about stopping your thoughts because you're never going to stop your thoughts, but it's allowing your thoughts to kind of go away in bubbles or release them and then coming back to center. A lot of mindfulness meditation is about a repetition kind of thing. So breathing, like breathing in for four, hold, exhale for four that like they say a full breath in and a full breath exhaled is a meditation and if you're counting for your breaths you know four in one two three four one two three four out one two three four that's mindfulness meditation now you can have moving mindfulness meditations um, because what the mindfulness meditation is doing is it's activating the theta um, brain waves. Now we're going to talk about that in a second. So mindfulness meditation, like doing the dishes. For me, I often meditate while I'm doing the dishes because it's the repetition of washing the plates, washing the cups. I've done it a million times. I can do it almost an autopilot. And that's kind of where you're trying to go when you're doing mindful 
meditation. You're trying to get into that. I am not part of the thoughts. Thoughts aren't here anymore because your body's busy doing something. And some say that's sort of a way of keeping your monkey mind busy. It's the one that's like, oh, what are we doing? Blah, 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 blah. You know, so you're keeping your monkey mind busy by doing this repetition, whether it's counting your breaths or whether it's doing dishes. A re repetitious kind of um, activity and you're always kind of coming back to center, but it activates those theta brain waves. Now, transcendental meditation is when you are focused on a mantra or a sound. So when people go, um, and that's transcendental meditation. Um, well, it's not just that, but what it is, is it's sitting in silence other than the mantra or the sound that you've picked. Like I said, um, is the sort of one most people know about. So you're sitting and you, um, and it, um, brings you into a space where you transcend thought. So you're sort of disengaged and disconnected from your thoughts and you're sort of, trans well, like I said, transcending them, you're above them. And what transcendental meditation does is it activates the alpha waves. So these different waves play on different things. So the alpha um, waves, they tend to bring about huge um, relaxation, like ultimate relaxation. It's, it's sort of the natural resting place for your brain. So what's cool about that, what's cool about transcendental is it puts your brain in rest mode, both conscious and subconscious, but you're still awake, you're still aware. You're not dreaming, you're not asleep, you're aware, but your brain has kind of slowed down and it's in a natural resting state. The other feeling that transcendental meditation can bring is a feeling of having completed something. So you know when you kind of, you get a project done, you're like, oh yeah, it's done, yay. You know, and you're like, oh, you kind of exhale. That's where transcendental meditation brings you. And that's why you're relaxed because you feel like you've completed something. And um, the army does this, for instance. They, they, they often say to create a successful day starts with a successful morning. And one thing they say is to make your bed. And the military does this by getting the soldiers to make their beds every day. Because what that does is it is a small task that you've completed so you know you've done one thing completely for that day. You've done one task. You've completed something. And when you've completed something, that puts you in a state of success. You know what success feels like because you've made your bed. This is what transcendental meditation tends to bring with that feeling of success, completion. I've hit my goal. I've done what I needed to do. You know, all those kind of feelings that come with those things. So success comes in more easily when you practice transcendental meditation. There's all kinds of other benefits as well, of course, you know, both physically, mentally, and spiritually for any kind of meditation. Now, the uh, mindfulness meditation brings the theta brain waves or activates those theta brain waves. Now, what this does is it, like I said, it's a more of a repetition. It's counting the breaths in. I used to doing my dishes as my example. Um, sometimes when you go, like if you're a jogger, if you're jogging, that can be a meditation, just that repetitious, you know, let's go kind of thing. And it activates the theta brain waves. And what that does is it brings in solutions because you're disengaging your thoughts. And so therefore you tend not to be thinking about the problem or um, the s scenario in your life. Like, so for instance, you know, when you've been working on something, you just, you feel like you're pounding your head against the wall and you just can't come up with a solution or, you know, the creative drive is gone or whatever. You need to get into that theta brainwave. You need to disconnect and disengage from that problem because you're just so far in the, the weeds that you can't see the forest for the trees sort of thing. So what it does is, like I said, it disengages and it allows the flow of good ideas and solutions. And it does it, the flow of ideas and solutions come without censorship, without guilt, and without judgment. So those are big things, because those are things we often place on our thoughts, sort of 
when we have them in, in our conscious mind, sometimes we're not always aware that we're placing guilt because again, that's from the subconscious. It's a reaction, right? Oh, that could never happen because I'm not, I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy of it. I couldn't succeed because I'm not worthy of it, right? So when your brain goes, no, oh, this would, this would be the solution. It would create that success that you're, that you're looking for. When you have it in, when your theta brain waves are activated, you don't have that guilt. You think, yeah, you're right. I can do that right? You're not attaching any kind of, like I said, censorship, judgment, or guilt to those thoughts. So if you want to work your way through something, that's why mindful meditation works so well. Um, You know, whether it be uh, a strong emotion, like you're getting divorced, or you're breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you're having some heartbreak, Mindfulness meditation is very good for it. If you're going through the grieving process, mindful meditation um, is very good for it. (coughs) Excuse me. So that's just meditation. (laughs) Now, I mentioned guided meditation, but I'm going to put it with number two. So number two is visualization. Now, guided meditation, um, you can get all kinds of videos on YouTube about guided meditation. I do a lot of guided meditation myself. Um, like as far as speaking it to my clients, having those scripts. But guided meditation is not real. It's sort of meditation, but it's more visualization. Now, visualization is important because to become really good at visualization means you're going to open those communication channels to your subconscious mind because your subconscious mind speaks the language of visualization. Your subconscious mind speaks in images and pictures. That's why your dreams are filled with images and pictures. Because like I said before, a picture is worth a thousand words. Because it's got 40 million bits of information per second to somehow process and feed to you so that you're aware of it. Because our dreams are often dealing with our emotions, our thoughts, our situations in life and the trick to dream journaling for instance is not taking it one dream at a time but looking at the pattern for a week two weeks a month's worth of dreams and seeing how the dialogue progresses or changes so um like i said by visualizing and doing guided meditation you're opening up a better way of being able to communicate with your subconscious mind. It's kind of like your subconscious mind speaks, you know, Italian and you're, you speak English. And so your subconscious mind is keeps speaking Italian to you because that's all it knows. And suddenly with visualization, you know how to speak Italian. So now you and your subconscious mind are going to have a much better conversation because you're not speaking two different languages to each other anymore. So the messages will come through clearer. You'll understand where your emotions are coming from, why you have the reactions you have, and you'll be able to change them or modify them or whatever you need to do more easily. The other thing that helps to activate your subconscious mind is music. Just plain old music, what your favorite songs are. Play your favorite playlist. What music does is it helps to get your brain into those alpha brain waves, which are the ones that come with transcendental meditation, which are the ones where you feel successful. You feel like you've completed something. It, uh, it's a natural place of rest for your mind. What it also does, um, music, is it activates energy um, in your body. And I don't mean like, oh, special energy. I mean, it energizes your body. Um, One of the things I do when I'm feeling sluggish is I put my headphones on and I just listen to a couple of songs. And then I'm like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get up and do whatever I need to do, Um, especially if it's something physical. It takes away my fogginess, my sluggishness, my tiredness, that sort of thing. So music is very important for that. And it also helps us to connect with our subconscious mind. Um, So music makes us more alert and awake. Um, Sleep on it is another thing. Before you make any kind of big decisions, you should always sleep on it. That's a very good saying, and it's a saying for a reason, because when you're able to sleep on it, especially if you consciously put that thought, like, I need to, let's say I wanna move. Should I move? I don't know. Okay, so I go to sleep or I'm getting ready for bed 
And just as I'm falling asleep, I tell my subconscious mind, I want to find out whether I really believe, should I move or should I not? And then you dream. And your subconscious mind will let you know. And even if you don't remember your dreams, a lot of times you'll wake up with a feeling that, yeah, I need to move or no, I don't need to move. I'm happy right here. I'm going to stay right here. So sleeping on it, sleeping on it before you make big decisions, sleeping on it if you're worried about something, if you want to work through a scenario or a situation, sleep on it. That's a really good way of connecting because that's when your subconscious mind takes over anyways when you're sleeping and that's when it talks to you. Um, doing art is another good way to tap into your subconscious mind. So when you do art, anything creative, it doesn't have to be art like painting art. It can be coloring. That's why coloring books are so, um, well, popular, but also so uh, effective because it is engaging a different part of your mind that employs your subconscious mind. It's playful. Play. Doing art is like playing. So don't be afraid to play either because playing is what your subconscious mind loves to do because remember your subconscious mind is very much your inner child it's very childlike it takes everything literally it doesn't really discern between right or wrong or imaginary and and not and reality um and like i said it takes everything literally so playing doing art doing like playing music um drawing coloring gluing things to paper <laughs> like even if you're just gluing macaroni to paper that's a form of play building something with lego blocks doing that diamond art that's very popular um crocheting knitting cross stitching you know all kinds of crafts that is all artistic kind of stuff the nice thing about crocheting and knitting too is it's a repetitive thing so you can really get into that sort of transcendental mode when you do that. Or I mean your mindfulness mode where the solutions come to you kind of thing. So you're opening up all kinds of good uh, brain waves and you're getting in touch with your um, subconscious so that you're able to have more control over your life and go where you want to go as opposed to just, you know, oh my gosh, and knowing when to flow with the flow and knowing when to go where you want to go kind of thing. Knowing the right moments to let those things happen. Um, the other thing is uh, gratitude. Now, I know we've all heard gratitude journals, be thankful, y'all. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> the day I started a gratitude journal was the day my life changed. And I started a gratitude journal the day I was told I had cancer. Um, because what that did for me was it made me kind of take a step back and realize all the good things in my life. And it made me look at some of the bigger picture things as opposed to getting lost in the little details that I would get frantic about. Um, oh, it's not going right because of this one little thing. It's really bothering me. You know, yeah, but you have this wonderful thing here, right? So gratitude, I can attest to, does shift your brain. And what it does is it shifts your brain into a place of accepting those good things in your life by being thankful for the good things that you already have in your life because it shifts your brain, first of all, in looking for the good things in your life as opposed to focusing on those nitpicky things or things that are going wrong. Where your attention goes, your focus flows, and thus what you're feeding your subconscious mind, right? As opposed to looking at this thing and going, oh, look at that corner, it's so messy, oh my gosh. As opposed to saying, look at my beautiful office. I have this great office and this is awesome. Or, you know, like, oh, that one dress, it looks so ugly on me, I don't look good in clothes, blah, blah, blah. As opposed to look at this entire wardrobe you have, the beautiful clothing that looks great on you. You know, again, looking at those things that you're grateful for. Find the good in your life because that will shift where your focus is and therefore shift where your brain is. So now you're in a state of gratitude. So now you're open to receiving more good things. Because again, what you're thinking, if you're thinking all these negative things, if you're, think, if you're nitpicking on those details or you think, oh, I got a crappy car or whatever, you're attaching, again, your conscious mind is attaching that negative tag to that. 
and your subconscious is going, oh, we like crappy cars. Okay, so we need to buy a new car. We know we need to buy a crappy one. <laughs> you know, so that's how it kind of works. So I hope this helped you to kind of see how those two things are connected. Um, so like I said, write those. Well, you don't have to write them down. You can just think about them. That can be part uh, prelude to your meditations if you want. Um, I started by writing, but then... Um, Writing is a, a physical way of forcing yourself into that state of gratitude. Now I know to step back and be thankful and I try to um, consciously look around me and say how grateful I am for things or how I appreciate things. I'm constantly telling clients how great I have it. I have great clients. I have a great business. I have a great life. I have a great husband. Um, I have great children. I have great grandchildren. <laughs> so I have a lot of good things in my life. I'm very, very blessed. And I may not have said that seven years ago. Um, I may have focused on, you know, other things in my life that were more negative. Since I shifted, and it's been a work in progress, um, and it still continues. Don't get me wrong. Don't uh, don't think I don't go home and grump over things sometimes or get frustrated and ask, why me? Why is it always happening to me? But then I know now to take that step back and go, hang on, you know, let's look at the good or let's see what the lesson is here and or let's take some breaths if I'm being a child and going, I don't want to look at the good in my life. <laughs> um I take some breaths, let's take some breaths and you know, okay, we're gonna go sit down for a minute and just relax, right? And get ourselves into a better state. And then we're gonna go and see what good we have or why are we so frustrated? And I talk to myself on the inside like I'm a five-year-old child because that works, first of all. And my five-year-old child responds, that's my subconscious, much more positively when I speak to her in a nice voice, in a constructive voice, in a um, let's find the fun in life as opposed to letting her get out of control and throw a temper tantrum. So like I said, I hope this helps you with your manifesting, with understanding the science and the reasoning why um, all this works and how to sort of turn on those on switches so it starts to work. Because that's the biggest question. You hear about manifesting, you hear about if I my thoughts are right, then life will be right. But understanding the process behind it hopefully will help you to be able to really engage in this and bring it into your life in a fully functioning, working way. Okay, thank you so much for being here and for watching this whole video. I truly appreciate it. Please subscribe to my channel so that I can continue doing these wonderful videos. I really enjoy them. Um, and uh, thank you for all your support. I'll put some of my links down below so that you can follow me or visit my Etsy store, whatever you want to do. If you want to reach out, please feel free to message me. And again, I want to say thank you so much for being here and being a part of my channel. I truly appreciate it. Take care. Bye.